Welcome back to another video of Sharon Zoology. In our previous session, we learned about the extra embryonic membranes in humans. Here, today we are going to learn about the structure, function and formation of human placenta. So here this one is endometrium. See here, this is the endometrium of uterus. You know, the endometrium have two layers. This is the endometrium basal layer. Decidua basalis. And this superficial layer is Decidua functionalis. These are the two layers of endometrium. We know about six days after fertilization. About six days after fertilization. The blastocyst, the embryonic stage blastocyst implanted in this endometrium. See so here this is the blastocyst stage. And in this blastocyst stage, we know these are inner cell mass. This inner cell mass split to form a new cavity. Inner cell mass split to form a new cavity followed by epiblast. Hypoblast. So we already studied about this structure. This is amnion. Epiblast. Hypoblast. Yolk sac. This bilaminar germ disc, this embryonic stage are implanted, implanted in this endometry. See after this implantation, what is this outer layer? This is the outer cell mass. This outer cell mass is called a stropoblast. This is stropoblast. After this implantation, this stropoblast splits and forms. Cytotropoblast and syncytiotropoblast. So this tropoblast split to form cytotropoblast and syncytiotropoblast. Then, see here after this implantation, this syncytiotropoblast penetrated. This syncytiotropoblast penetrated to the Stromal tissues of endometrium. These are syncytial tropoblasts. This syncytial tropoblast penetrated to the stromal tissues of endometrium. This one is syncytial tropoblast, which penetrated the stromal tissues of endometrium by secreting some hydrolytic enzymes. In this stage, this syncytial tropoblast secrete hydrolytic enzyme which helps to penetrate this endometrium or penetrate the stromal tissues of endometrium. And also, this syncytial tropoblast, this one is syncytial tropoblast. This syncytial tropoblast starts secreting a hormone called as HCG, human chorionic gonadotropins. HCG, human chorionic gonadotropins. We know the hormone progesterone is needed for the maintenance of this endometrium. Under the stimulation of progesterone, this endometrium fully proliferated. Endometrial nutritional accumulation increases by the action of progesterone. Endometrial blood vascular system become more folded and the surface area of blood vascular tissues and glandular tissue increases by the action of the hormone progesterone. 
So the hormone progesterone is needed for the maintenance of endometrium for increasing their secretory activity of endometrium. It is very necessary for the development of this embryo. And we know this progesterone, the hormone progesterone is secreted by the hormone progesterone. Secreted by the corpus luteum of ovary. After the formation of corpus luteum, usually this corpus luteum is maintained by a hormone called as LS. But about 6 or 7 days after ovulation, LH secretion decline. What happened? Corpus luteum start degeneration. But if fertilization happened, about, or, about 6 or 7 days after fertilization, this implantation takes place. After implantation, this syncytial tropoblast starts secreting a hormone HCG, human chorionic gonadotropin. And this HCG maintains and stimulate this corpus luteum. So this HCG maintain and stimulate this corpus luteum for the synthesis and secretion of progesterone as well as estrogen. So about 6 days after fertilization, that means after implantation, the syncytial tropoblast starts secreting HCG, that HCG maintain corpus luteum, even in the absence of LH. Then the syncytial tropoblast continue the invading and penetration of the stromal tissues of endometrium. See what happened. The syncytial tropoblast invert deeply into endometrium. As a result, a cavity is formed. This cavity here. Yeah. A cavity is formed in between these projections. A cavity is formed in between this projection. That newly formed cavity, this cavity, where a cavity is formed. This formed a cavity in stromal tissue, this formed a cavity is called as Lacune. So what is this lacune? Lacune is nothing but the space in between the syncytial projections of stromal tissue. So lacune is nothing but stromal tissue. The space in stromal tissue in between the syncytial projections are called as lacune. Okay. We know here, this is, the this is the endometrium and this endometrial stromal tissue consisting blood vessels. So here blood vessels are here in the endometrial stromal tissue. Now this syncytial tropoblast, see this syncytial tropoblast again secretes some hydrolytic enzymes. And this enzyme break the endothelium of this capillary wall of this capillary what happened this blood sweep into the lacunae that means this maternal blood sweep into the lacunae this is the maternal blood this maternal blood is sweeped in this lacunae so the maternal blood get filled in this lacunae okay at this time see here this is the embryo this embryo containing a trilaminar, this, this is the P blast and this one is hypoblast. And after this, this hypoblast start producing some mesodermal tissues. See. This is the cytotropoblast, this cytotropoblast. Just inner to this cytotropoblast. See here, these are the embryonic cell called as hypoblast. Some of the tissues or arises from this hypoblast arranged in up to this cytotropoblast. See here. So these are the tissues formed from this hypoblast and these tissues are arranged in up to this cytotropoblast. So this one is the embryotic amnion. This is a P-blast. And this part is this hypoblast. 
and this hypoblast produce some tissues in that to the cytotrophoblast and this newly formed tissue this newly formed tissue called as extra embryonic mesoderm this is extra embryonic mesoderm and we know at the same time we have this syncytial tropoblast the well developed syncytial tropoblast is here and the space between the syncytial tropoblast is filled with the blood and these changes occurs after about 12 days after fertilization about after 12 days after fertilization so 6 days after fertilization implantation takes place but 12 day after fertilization these extra embryonic mesoderms were formed then about 13 or 13 to 14 days after fertilization about 13 to 14 days after fertilization then about 13 or 14 days after fertilization this extra embryonic mesoderm split to form a cavity this extra embryonic mesoderm split to form a cavity a cavity is formed in this extra embryonic mesoderm this formed cavity is called as chorionic cavity now this cavity is chorionic cavity and this mesoderm now this mesoderm called as this part of mesoderm we already studied about this mesoderm and changes and this mesoderm is called as somatopleur the mesoderm which line this cytotropoblast the mesoderm which line this cytotropoblast is somatopleur and this mesoderm which cover this this is yolk sac you know this part is yolk sac yolk sac is called as splanchnopleur i thought it may previous video about this somatopleur and uh, splanchnopleur then a connection or stack existed in between a mesodermal connection or stack existed in between this tropoblast and embryo this one this mesodermal stack remains in between this tropoblast and embryo then this cytotropoblast this is the cytotropoblast this cytotropoblast proliferate the cytotropoblast proliferate and penetrated to the syncytial tropoblast and penetrate this syncytial tropoblast the cytotropoblast proliferate and penetrate this syncytial tropoblast proliferate and penetrate this syncytial tropoblast the cytotropoblast proliferate and penetrate this syncytial tropoblast and this cytotropoblast then formed around the villi of this syncytial tropoblast or the projections of this syncytial tropoblast the cytotropoblast now formed as a covering of this syncytial tropoblast it is the cytotropoblast proliferate and penetrate the syncytial tropoblast and form as a covering or shield of this syncytial tropoblast this covering is called outer cytotropoblast shell outer cytotropoblast shell okay then now here this cytotropoblast get modified as here this cytotropoblast proliferated and penetrated to the syncytial tropoblast 
Now this cytotropoblast. The finger like a projections formed from this cytotropoblast. This projections formed from this cytotropoblast is called as primary villi. This projections formed from this cytotropoblast called as primary villi. It occurs around three weeks after fertilization. It occurs around three weeks after fertilization. At this time, see, this is the extra embryonic mesoderm. This extra embryonic mesoderm penetrated, proliferated and penetrated to this cytotropoblast. This extra embryonic mesoderm proliferate and penetrated to this cytotropoblast. This extra embryonic mesoderm proliferate and penetrated the cytotropoblast and form the secondary villi. And form the secondary villi. This extra embryonic mesoderm become the secondary villi. Now it becomes Now it changes Here we know these are the projections from syncytial tropoblast Projections from syncytial tropoblast These are the projections from Cytotropoblast, the projections from cytotropoblast is called as primary villi. And these are the projections from this extra embryonic mesoderm. The projections from this extra embryonic mesoderm called secondary villi. So these projections are the projections from syncytial tropoblast, projections from cytotropoblast, then projections from extra embryonic mesoderm secondary villi. And when it penetrated to the endometrium of uterus, these are the endometrial tissues, endometrium decidua, and this is the functionalis layer. Now this embryo is in this endometrium functionalis layer. But we know, here in this stage, the blood vessels or the, this space is known as lacunae. We know this space is lacunae. See here this lacunae, this lacunae. See here these are lacunae. We know this one is lacunae. This lacunae contain the maternal blood. So here this is the lacunae. This lacunae contain maternal blood. This is the lacunae. This lacunae contain maternal blood. Lacunae contain maternal blood. At this time. This is the extra embryonic mesoderm. This secondary villi is actually formed from the extra embryonic mesoderm. And here this extra embryonic mesoderm develop blood vessels and blood. This extra embryonic blood vessels. This extra embryonic mesoderm develop blood vessels. So blood is formed in this secondary villi. They are formed from this extra embryonic mesoderm. And see, you know, this is the stack. This stack. This stack will modify us. This is the stack. This stack is here modified as umbilical cord. Umbilical cord. This umbilical cord contains arteries and veins formed from this extra embryonic mesoderm. So this stack contain two arteries and one vein. It contain two arteries and one vein. So it contain two umbilical arteries and two umbilical vein. And all these blood vessels are formed from this extra embryonic mesoderm. So the extra embryonic mesoderm high now with this stack. This is a part of extra embryonic mesoderm. It modified as umbilical cord. And it contains blood vessels and that the blood vessels and blood formed from the extra embryonic mesoderm. See this part. This part is 
syncytial villi. This is the syncytial trophoblast. This syncytial trophoblast. And this syncytial trophoblast contain the primary villi. These are formed from the cytotropoblast. The primary villi. Cytotropoblast. Projections of cytotropoblast. And inside this cytotropoblast contain the projections of extra embryonic mesoderm is the secondary villi. Secondary villi. And this secondary villi contain blood vessels. What happened? What is this space? This space is known as lacunae. This space, this intervillae space is called as lacunae. We know this lacunae contain the maternal blood. This lacunae contain this maternal blood. So, so there is no direct contact between this maternal and fetal blood. And here it allow the exchange of materials between this maternal and fetal blood. Allow the exchange of materials between maternal and fetal blood. Okay. Then we know this part is the decidua basalis of endometrium. This is the decidua basalis. Some tissues are formed from this decidua basalis. The tissues are formed from this decidua basalis. These tissues are formed from this decidua basalis here. The tissues are formed from this decidua basalis. This tissue formed from the decidua basalis called as cotyledons. Cotyledons, the tissues formed from this decidua basalis called as cotyledons. And this cotyledon separate this villi. This cotyledon separate this villi into two or three chambers. So this cotyledon separate the villi into different chambers or compartmentalize. So this cotyledon partitions the villi, partition the villi. This cotyledon partition the villi and this different types of and that means a number of villes are chambered in a particular chamber so this cotyledons formed from the decidua basalis partitions this villi or chambered then from the week 4 to 8 from the week 4 to 8 a number of changes occurs in this villi here This is a syncytial villi contain the primary villi, the villi from cytotropoblast. This is the villi formed from the extra embryonic mesoderm called as secondary villi. And the secondary villi contain blood vessels, the fetal blood. And from the week 4 to 8, it changes in tremendous and drastic changes occurs in this villi. The changes are branching of this villi takes place. Branching of this villi. That is, see this is the syncytial tropoblast. This part, the syncytial tropoblast, it contains. The primary villi formed from the cytotropoblast. It contains the secondary villi formed from the extra embryonic mesoderm, which is rich in blood vessels. So, blood vessels become more folded and branched. What happened? Increase at the surface area of this villi. Increase at the surface area of the villi. This is called as chorionic villi. This 
this is the chorionic villi and here about 4 to 8 week the surface area of this chorionic villi increases by the branching of this villi. Great. And if increasing surface area it increases the exchange of materials between maternal and fetal blood. It increases the exchange of material between maternal blood and fetal blood. See now here within the uterus. This is uterus. This part is the decidua basalis of uterus. These are the chorionic villi. All these villi, these are chorionic villi. All of these are chorionic villi. All these chorionic villi, all these chorionic villi are collectively called as all these chorionic villi are collectively called as chorionic frondosum all these chorionic villi are collectively called as chorionic frondosum and here this decidua basal is along with this chorionic frondosum this is decidua this is chorionic frondosum this decidua along with this chorionic frondosum they are togetherly called as placenta this chorionic frondosum along with this decidua basalis are collectively called as placenta. So this is the structure of placenta and this is the formation of placenta. Here this decidua basalis along with this chorionic frondosum called as placenta. Then what is this portion? This is umbilical cord. This one is amnion. This is embryo. And here this green colored portion is chorion. This chorion is formed from syncytia tropoblast, cytotropoblast and extra embryonic mesoderm. So this is chorion. And here. Here this, this, this blue colored portion is decidua. And here this decidua extended and surround this chorion. This decidua extend and surround this chorion. This decidua called this decidua. This decidua called decidua capsularis. This decidua called decidua capsularis. And this is also decidua. This part is also decidua. It's an extension from this decidua. And this decidua are not involved in this fetal portion. And this decidua is called as decidua peritalis. This is decidua peritalis. This form the structure of placenta. So this is placenta. And in this placenta, this placenta portion is decidua basalis along with this chorionic frontosum called as placenta. And this part is umbilical cord. What is the role of this umbilical cord? It is a vascular connection between this placenta and embryo. We know this umbilical cord contains umbilical arteries and vein, and it allows the passage of materials between the placenta and fetus. Okay. And this is embryo, this is amnion, and this part is chorion. And the extensions of decidua which cover this chorion called as decidua capsularis. Then extensions of this uh, sorry decidua not involved in this uh, fetus are called as decidua peritalis. But during the course of development, when this embryo expanded, the fusion of these two membrane takes place. That means the fusion of decidua basalis and decidua peritalis takes place. When this fetus expands, the fusion of these two membrane takes place. Okay, we completed the structure and formation of placenta. Next, functions of placenta. First one, exchange of respiratory gases. Exchange of respiratory gases means transport of oxygen from maternal body to fetal body and transport of carbon dioxide from fetal body to maternal body. So, exchange of respiratory gases. 
then transport of nutrients nutrients are transported through this placenta by means of facilitated transport or by simple diffusion facilitated diffusion transport of nutrients then removal of metabolic waste see the metabolic waste metal formed in the fetal body are transported to placenta and diffuses to the maternal body so it allow the transport of metabolic waste between fetal and maternal body that is transport of metabolic waste from fetal body to maternal body the antibody igg cross placenta these are the only antibody which cross placenta the antibody igg cross placenta thereby get passive immunity so the, this maternal body the igg from maternal body are transported to fetal body through placenta and it provide passive immunity to fetus okay because this igg these are the smallest antibody Oh, thereby these are the only antibody which cross placenta immunoglobulin g and this placenta acts as a strong barrier it is a strong barrier between maternal and fetal body even in the presence of this strong barrier some infection or the infected air infected agent or pathogen passes through this placenta a number of infection through the placenta like syphilis is a bacterial infection raponema pallidum bacterium causes the disease syphilis then hepatitis b viral infection hepatitis b virus infection hiv human herpes simplex 2 infection human herpes simplex 2 virus causes this placenta that means the genital herpes caused by the virus herpes simplex 2 then the zika virus zika virus can cross placenta rubella rubella virus cytomegalovirus cmv cytomegalovirus and the protozoan disease like toxoplasmosis this infection can through this placenta even it acts as a strong barrier some pathogen can pass us through this placenta and cause infection fetus then this placenta acts as an endocrine gland by secreting some hormones placental hormones this placenta hormones are it secrete hcg human chorionic gonadotropin but we know this hcg production begins 6 day after fertilization we know from at the beginning the syncytial tropoblast start secreting this hcg and this hcg production continue even after the formation of this placenta but not up to the completion of pregnancy this hcg production decline about 4 months of pregnancy this hcg production decline we know what is the role of this hcg this hcg function it maintain corpus luteum this hcg maintain corpus luteum what is the role of corpus luteum corpus luteum secrete progesterone see progesterone is needed for maintaining this pregnancy but here about 4 months after pregnancy this corpus luteum degenerate because of the absence of this hcg but after the formation of this placenta this placenta itself can secrete progesterone and estrogen so this placenta secrete progesterone estrogen and this progesterone will maintain this pregnancy okay so in the absence of hcg there is no problem there is no complication with this pregnancy because this placenta formed this placenta can secrete large amount of progesterone and estrogen so it secrete hcg then the hormone progesterone estrogen 
and another hormone HPL human placental lactogen human placental lactogen see this human placental lactogen stimulate the mammary gland for the synthesis of nutrients it stimulate the mammary gland for the synthesis of nutrients needed for the production of milk but in addition to the mammary gland development it helps in lipolysis gluconeogenesis and thereby increases the blood glucose level and the glucose is made available for the energy production or for the metabolism of fetus so it increases the blood glucose level and it partially inhibits the hormone insulin not completely and thereby increases the blood glucose level in fetus and placenta secrete CRH corticotropin releasing hormone CRH corticotropin releasing hormone this CRH stimulates the secretion of cortisol this cortisol helps in the formation of surfactants of lungs this cortisol from this placenta stimulate this cortisol produced as uh, under the stimulation of crh from placenta stimulate the production of surfactants of lungs we know lung alveoli have surfactants and that surfactants reduce the surface tension of alveoli if this surfactant is deficient which will leads to the collapsing of lung that condition like infant respiratory distress syndrome infant respiratory distress syndrome due to the deficiency of surfactants leads to the collapsing of lung alveoli see this erh production stimulate the production of surfactants by stimulate the secretion of cortisol so crs from placenta stimulate the secretion of cortisol cortisol helps in the formation of surfactants then this placenta secrete the hormone thyroxine which helps in the development of central nervous system which helps in the development of brain or central nervous system in fetus so the fetal development record is thyroid hormone the deficiency of thyroxine in fetus or in infants leads to cretinism because the development of central nervous system required this thyroxine then it secrete the hormone relaxin this hormone relaxin relaxes this hormone relaxin relaxes the ligaments of ligaments of pubic symphysis it helps in the relaxing of ligaments of pubic symphysis what happen causes the widening of birth canal and helps in expulsion of fetus is a role of relaxin secreted by this placenta so these are the hormones secreted by placenta the placenta hormones are hcg progesterone estrogen hpl then crh thyroxine and relaxin etc are the hormones secreted by placenta so these are the functions of placenta okay so in this session we completed structure formation and functions of placenta okay so thank you for watching my video please like share and subscribe my channel sharing zoology